Hello everyone, my name is Victoria Vinay Castor and I am the Water Conservation and Sustainability Coordinator for the City of Peoria. So I graduated from ASU with my bachelor's degree in geography and I was a little bit different because I focused on physical geography. I actually went and got my master's degree from the University of North Texas in geomorphology, so in physical geography. Um, and it's kind of an interesting blend. So I, I work now in sustainability, but my background is in physical geography. And, and normally you wouldn't think those two unite, but really it's kind of a, a perfect uh, a mixture of, I know about earth systems and processes that are happening and how our earth's surface is changing over time. But then we're relating that to also our human impacts, right? Humans change our earth surface over time as well. And so really it's it's a quite a nice, um, a combination. <laughs> So I ended up working out that even though I would not have gotten uh, my degree thinking I was going to work in sustainability, it ended up working out uh, perfectly that way. So uh, I'll talk a little bit about some of the projects um, that I work on in my job. Um, Right, so we kind of two hats. There's the sustainability hat and then there's the water conservation hat. And even though both of those all fall under the sustainability umbrella, water conservation is certainly a big factor in that. Um, but because of how the programs were set, uh, Peoria has had a water conservation program for over 30 years. So water conservation is actually required by our state uh, due to the Groundwater Management Act. And there are BMPs and regulations that we have to make sure that we're meeting each year. Um, whereas sustainability is a, a little bit newer in the city, and um, it's definitely not required or regulated. So you kind of have to, even though conservation is under sustainability, there's definitely a lot more robust um, rules and regulations and program needs and requirements that come with the water side um, than with the sustainability side overall. Um, some of the day-to-day -day things in conservation are uh, we and by meeting those BMPs, we have to have a, a bunch of different programs. So we have rebate programs that focus on being able to do things that will save residents and our customers, commercial and, and whatnot, water. And so one of the biggest ways is converting grass to xeriscape, since the average home, uh, more than 50% of the average home's water use is actually outdoors. So a lot of our conservation programs are focused on those at, that outdoor nexus and about watering our plants smartly and by choosing desert adapted or our native plants. So we have a big program that focuses on that. Uh, we do adult education. So we have a program called the Sustainable U and that is our adult classes that are, are offered. They're free to the public. Um, they have a lot of water related classes, of course, because we're again blending those two things together. But we also offer some more sustainable minded topics such as um, energy efficiency and recycling and composting and even um, healthy eating. So we try and cover that broad basis with our education programs. Um, and then we also have uh, just a whole host of other requirements through the, the conservation side. So I kind of manage that program and make sure that we're meeting those requirements and that we um, are uh, consistent with the state's needs. I also work closely with our resource manager. So our water resources person, that's the one that's actually setting um, the goal and ordering water for our city to make sure that uh, we have enough for our customers. So there's a lot of close interactions with others in our water department on that side. For the sustainability side, lots of different projects that are going on with that. Um, one of the biggest things is that it's definitely interdepartmental. Uh, so we have to collaborate with everyone. Um, the, in the coordinator position, you're doing exactly what your position states, is that you are trying to coordinate a lot of these other activities because you cannot be the master of, of everything. I can't know everything about fleet and about um, lead buildings and and water and everything. So we have to really look to our internal experts. So we have a green team, which are our are, are interdepartmental uh, members that have joined. We've got about 20 different people on our green team and that's about 10 different departments right now. And really it's uh, the collaboration within our green team that we're using to help us identify and move forward with sustainable actions and goals um, in our community. And so we've got a green team now in Peoria and we are currently working on recreating our sustainability plan. Uh, the last time it was done was quite a few years ago, so it's definitely due for a revamp. And a big focus of this project is going to be community outreach. 
So in water conservation, we're always doing community outreach. That's a huge component. And in sustainability, we were always doing some, um, but that's going to grow to the next level. So we have events, we host live Q&As um, um, online. Usually we would be out in the public, potentially in the neighborhoods as well um, with these pop-up neighborhood events. And so for part of this plan, we're going to do an entire outreach and education um, strategy and plan so that we can gather input from our residents on what a sustainable Peoria looks like. And then we're going to take all of that info from our community members and basically draft the plan from that. Uh, we want to make sure that we're uniting the vision of our community with what we are trying to accomplish as a city internally. And so this will be a really large project as we go out and we you know, meet our residents and we see what their needs are in the sustainability realm. Uh, so those are a couple of the big things that we're doing. Um, there's inter-collaboration, internal as well as external. We work with a bunch of different partners. So in water conservation, we have the um, AMWA, which here in the state is our uh, Arizona Water Users Association. So we've got regional partnerships uh, that we, all the city conservation folks as well as the resources folks sit down at the table with the other large city um, employees and we get to chat through our uh, concerns and issues and things that are happening. And that's really important because we all use the same water. So we all are fighting that same fight and we all have to work together to make sure that we have safe and secure water sources for everyone. And in sustainability, there are similar groups. Um, so we have ASU Project Cities that we work closely with. Um, we work closely with the Extension Office uh, through the University of Arizona. So our master gardeners are some of our teachers. Um, they also do programs for education um, and for our youth. So we have youth education. We reach about 1,500 fourth graders every year. And we work through that Project Wet program to have these water festivals. So uh, we are doing a lot internally. Uh, we're communicating to our residents and our stakeholders all the time, but we're also partnering with these regional groups as well. So lots of different tiers um, that we get to work with. So next I'll talk about some advice for students that you are doing your work and you're thinking about the future and what some opportunities are. And so I've got kind of three points of advice I will point to. Um, the first one is start somewhere. If your degree is very specific, don't feel like you have to only get a first job or an internship in that very small area. They're tricky to get into. Really broaden your horizon. It, you'll never know what that door when you walk through right what what it can open to and that was was my situation i was flexible i didn't really have sets like oh i'm gonna have to do this and this and it ended up allowing me the flexibility to walk into some really wonderful opportunities so keep an open mind and just start somewhere even if it's not where you want to be now it can clearly get you to a, a better place uh, later so just start somewhere and the next um tidbit of advice is to think in terms of we and teams. Um, most work that's out there, you're going to be working with a team, you're going to be collaborating with others. And when we just automatically think of ourselves and our work as a team situation and not an I, but a we, that is very helpful. Um, really, when you get into the working world and you have to, to do that, it helps um, break down some of the barriers and make sure that you're a team player. And that's a really big thing. And then my next item is to be flexible. Um, in the work that we do daily, it changes day to day. And when we are doing our events and our outreach and these big programs, things are going to shift and they're going to shift without necessarily having any warning. And you have to be flexible enough to bend and change and jump from one thing to the other and not lose your mind and, and, and get super stressed out. Just have to accept that part of the, the daily job is experience you know, the unexpected. We're all going to have it. Um, be okay with that and be able to flex and change and be able to jump from one thing to another if needed. When I am looking for staff, that is, is one of the key things that I'm looking for is that I need someone that can stay calm and collected and can easily take control of situation and move from one thing to the, the other without getting really flustered because it didn't work out exactly like they had planned. 
how we got there does not matter nearly as much as our end result. And so making sure you keep that in mind and that you, you can stay flexible is a huge thing that employers, just like myself, are looking for um, in this line of work. So that is my last bit of advice, and I wish you all great luck in your school. And just remember, find opportunities, walk through those doors. You have no idea where they will lead you to, and it might be much better than, than what you could have previously expected. Good luck, everyone.